the they are the best motivators in my life compared to people who don't know me but they had some good advice but i think my grandparents were the best i think anyone yeah no also even dear mas man even us we need some appreciation <laughs> once in a while we'll send it back you said it yeah i promise i'll send it back <laughs> <laughs> this podcast is proudly sponsored by visionary marketing Hello guys um and welcome to another episode of the Just a Kick it is a blessing podcast with your host Keith Tupagati Ramu thank you for joining us in another podcast where we teach inspire and motivate through the art of storytelling um and today is a very special episode for me i have a special guest in studio with me um we've been wanting to do this for a very very long time so i'm glad to have him in studio today so without further ado i will let him introduce himself Yeah, hey, I'm Sean Andrew. I'm a content creator, a digital marketer, whatever, influencer, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. I'm a good friend of Tupac's and we've been meaning to do this for many, many years, huh? Yep. Uh since since you started. Yeah, yeah, since I started. Since yeah. I was even at the old place. Yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, we've just we've just found the time now. Yeah. I so, think <laughs> timing is perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. I'm happy to be here and yeah, let's chat. And <laughs> so these days on this podcast we have this ritual um I have this app that sends me questions daily mm-hmm. um and today's question was have you ever made fun of girls that you're interested in if so why well yeah and I, uh, I think when it comes to like fetishishness yeah of course you you make fun of her and be like yeah you know you're cute but you're not cute enough for me and then she she'll try and pursue you or yeah. whatever yeah 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 and sometimes you know in your you get a bit bitter when they when they reject you so yeah yeah you still make fun <coughs> of them um i don't know if i should be saying this but it's okay i'm i'm, I'm used to exposing myself on this platform so <laughs> <laughs> i'll just go ahead and say it um for me personally when i was young i think i really made like fun of some girls you know because mm-hmm like especially the ones that I wasn't able to pursue and get but it was uh, like kind of a way to make me feel better about myself mm. you know like yeah it it like heals you man it heals like, you yeah, yeah. it was just the, like ah, the nails went perfect you know <laughs> the the wig was a nice it was nice you know yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 i get you yeah um before we get to um the main conversation that we're going to have is mm. Um as I was doing research for this podcast i came across um an interview that you had done where you said you didn't want to have kids. Mm-hmm. Um I don't know how long ago that was but is that still the same case now? And if so why and if that has also changed why? Let me just tell you something from the age of 8. Yeah. I've known well I, at the same time I wanted dreadlocks mm-hmm. and my mom was like no you have to wait till you're 18 and you can do whatever you want. Yeah. So from the age of 8 like I've pretty much mapped out my life in one way or another. Yeah and uh, not having kids was part of that and i was like yeah i don't know if i'll ever be a dad i don't see it I don't i don't feel like i'll be a dad mm-hmm. i'll be a great uncle <laughs> with that fun uncle you know the kid will always <laughs> trust me yeah. i'll probably buy the, the when they turn 18 i'll probably buy them their first beer yeah that sort of stuff i'm i'm fun with kids i'm yeah. nice with kids but they go back to their parents yeah. I'm, i'm not a dad i don't see it mm. <clears throat> do you think um How okay first of all how's your relationship with your parents um do you think that might have caused what you are or it's, it was just a personal goal you knew that this is what i need to be the best level of shone mm. and if i have one two or three they might be distractions to me uh well uh how do i put this i'm good with my folks yeah yeah we're good uh, and it's nothing to do with how they raised me or whatever mm-hmm. i think they were good parents they were they did their best yeah uh on my part i've just never seen myself being a dad mm-hmm. even to my pets I'm quite the horrible father you know because <laughs> a yeah. boy is traveling and I leave them alone at home and <laughs> you know and now it's my mom's responsibility or whoever is at home there yeah always complaining why you always travel for months or whatever and you never you never even <laughs> give a damn about these pets yeah. <laughs> I'm like no I do but I'm just not around you're just busy I'm on the move yeah so Yeah, I don't think um I have the I have it in me to be a dad. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just a free <coughs> a free spirit like that. Yeah. I I like what you've said. Um I think the other day I came across um 
was it a podcast or an article? No, it was a video, I think maybe on Instagram or something. Mm. And there was a lady just having that conversation about parenting and she was like, I don't think everyone is, you know, built to be a parent. Yeah. You know, and I think that's what we're seeing in and I think that was the pressure that the previous society had is uh, you felt like a, being a parent was an accomplishment but you know yeah but they also look at the way things are now like yeah. there's the job crisis is a high cost of living mm-hmm. even to educate your child is Crazy. almost impossible man there's some schools that are charging almost 3 million a, a term what yeah is that? <laughs> really well let me tell you <coughs> i went to um actually on s- yeah saturday mm-hmm. I went to the the supermarket. My auntie sent me to go and buy diapers for a child. Yeah. Bro, I looked at that thing and I'm like, <laughs> what the hell is going on, yeah? <clears throat> so yo me no cap, bro. Me I'm such a kikuyu, bro. Like Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you have called I've said, "Yo, me I can only see the one for three socks." She's like, "No, no, no, two pack. Diapers are 9.99." I said, "What?" <laughs> I said, "Yo." Yeah. I said, "No way. What yeah, is going yeah. on? 9.99." Okay. And those things I think were only is it 25 pieces or 20 pieces 20 that's not pieces. even a month bro no it's not it's not even a, it's probably a week the kid craps <laughs> like three times a day man <laughs> you run out of diapers immediately it's, it's hectic yeah crazy I, but i mean they're fun they're fun yeah. the kids are fun then mm-hmm. nice. i'm a good uncle mm, yeah. i think i'm a good uncle good yeah. cousin yeah yeah okay so now <clears throat> now to what brought us here today who is Sean Andrew and where did your story start you said from 8 what you wanted to be so maybe we could start there i can't give away all my secrets yeah, but yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah just from, what you're comfortable sharing from eight I, i just knew that i wanted to be a a, a notable person mm-hmm. someone who either inspires or helps people in one way or another mm-hmm. i don't think i'd ever be a politician it's <laughs> never it's never interested in me especially in this country it's a dirty dirty business eh? yeah dirty filthy and uh i think it's just easier you don't have to be in public life to help kenyans honestly yeah. i don't think it's it's a must mm-hmm. to to be elected or anything uh but yeah i think for for me i'm quite creative i love taking photos so it's been my thing uh i love being in the outdoors i travel i try and farm uh, and i love my pets i have too many pets <laughs> too too many pets it's hectic yeah but yeah that's that's basically me i try to be as a simple guy live a nice simple life mm-hmm. yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> actually well, one of the content creators i know you actually you're very relaxed you know you're very chill yeah yeah, yeah. there's no i don't am its growth you've grown i've grown yeah i've grown from it but like you know that there, there's so many people who have how do i put this they're too entitled mm-hmm. or they, they 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 think the 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 social media and whatever comes with so many perks mm-hmm. and they deserve all this that that i mean you're still a person you know and just be relatable that's the key thing why people follow is relatability and all that and i think if you do that you have a much more simpler life than when you come with all these expectations mm-hmm pretending you're so rich and you're not you know yeah. <laughs> <coughs> i really <coughs> i really like um what happened today is um we found a podcast that had just finished recording mm. and they all asked to take photos with you and you were so happy about it and you yeah. gave them your best smile like i like meeting people you know yeah i i mean i'm quite introverted i'd say that and i used to be very shy i don't think i'm that shy anymore but uh, yeah <laughs> but uh like you know, i always I, i've always now taken this approach of you know everyone everyone has something interesting to bring towards you you know you just be welcoming yeah. and try and talk to as many people you open your your mind to anything yeah. yeah i think there's a reason you meet everyone and like you said everyone has either something to learn from or something to give yeah, yeah. When you look back in your life is there a pivotal moment or is there that aha moment that you look back and say yeah this really shaped me or this really changed me there are many oh, wow 
That's even better. Yeah, there are many mm-hmm. twists and turns, I'll tell you that, because mm-hmm. for me, it always comes around when uh, mm-hmm. someone uh, Im- impactful dies in my, in my life, you mm-hmm. know? And you, you just think about it, how they lived mm-hmm. and uh, the struggles they came through and got where they were. They were. Uh, and it, it just shows you that, you know, life is, you only have one life. You only have one life. And uh, you should make the most out of it. Mm. And I think, yeah, I think there are a lot of deaths that have shaped me in that way. It's 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 quite morbid to say, but you know, it it, it makes you check yourself once in a while and say, have you, have you have you gotten to where you are? Yeah. Are you living well, or you're just struggling with with uh, understanding who you are and what you want to be? You know. There's, a, there's, there's quite a lot of moments like that. I'm pretty sure you have <coughs> as well. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Even <laughs> me, I've had, um, I've had quite a couple of moments. Uh-huh. Um, as a matter of fact, um, the other day I did a TED talk and I shared one of my personal stories. Mm. I don't even know how I shared that on that stage, bro. Like when I was speaking, my knees were shaking. Bro. Wow, yeah. yeah. There must have been quite a few people there. Huh? Yeah, um, yeah. And also, my dad was in the crowd. Uh-huh. Um, he had never heard what I shared. My brothers neither. Yeah. So like to go there and share on a public stage was quite crazy, but I felt like I needed to do that, yeah. and I felt so accomplished after yeah. I spoke. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But I like what you said. Even the other day, um, the other day I was driving down with my dad from, um, Nakuru, and mm. it was his birthday, and he was telling me that what has been one of the most important things is he said he wished he spent more time with his mom. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because he feels like she was so important, but they yeah. never had that many experiences that together. Many, yeah. yeah, so I, I like what you said. Um, you were the, you're the grandson of the late former president, yes. uh, Mwai Kibaki. Uh-huh. How was that? Uh, I don't know. It's just like being anyone else's grandchild. I have nothing extraordinary to tell you about that. It's just... <laughs> We tried to each of us tried to live a, a normalish life, yeah, yeah, with whatever mm-hmm. we could, and uh, I think uh, we all turned out right. I mean, you know my my cousin very well, yeah, he's a nice guy, very nice guy, <laughs> and uh, you've known me for a bit. So yeah. I, th- I think you have nothing bad to say about no, me. No, 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 no. Yeah, so oh. we're just a ni- we're simple people. Yeah, simple people. Yeah. <clears throat> um, when you look back to when he was president, what was probably one of the worst experiences? Was there ever time, or not getting a hold of him, or uh, uh, no, did he have no, a? No, no, I think it's just uh, <laughs> probably what was it? Oh, eight when there was post election and all that. Yeah, it was quite a tough time for for the country and for us as well. You know? Yeah, me in particular. I don't know if I should share this, but. Um, I was in boarding school. Yeah. And, you know, there's now guys are bullying you and they start calling you a child of a thief or, you know? Yeah. And uh, it's not a, it's some, some of those guys were my friends. Yeah. But it's out of nowhere because what their parents, it's, it's sad that some people's parents can really influ- influence them into the, into the wrong. Yeah, negativity. Yeah. And I think children should just be kept neutral mm-hmm. to form their own opinions. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I, I got bullied a bit, but then we got through it. Yeah, as anyone should. Yeah, mm. that was one of the tough times. Times. Yeah. yeah. Wow, I never thought you'd get bullied, but <laughs> <laughs> I was also bullied sometimes. Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. I was I was quite as bullied. <coughs> I, was I remember there was this um game that mm-hmm. we had. I think it was either versus Oshawa or Premier. Yeah, and. I used to want to be the guy who takes like the last penalty because I, I always thought I was the best guy in the team, mm. you know. And I missed Star it. Star player. You know. Ay, ay, ay. Yo, let me tell you the <laughs> things they told me on that bus <laughs> ride on the way home. Bro, I swear to you, I cried. Even the, the, uh, the, the girls there are not talking to uh, you. Uh, they don't want to even uh, know you. Yeah, bro, I, bro, I, <laughs> I think I was like maybe in year seven, year six. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. I yeah, cried. Yeah, yeah. Hey, That's the worst I one. I cried. Well, I was so vexed. <laughs> and I think it, it takes like a week for them to like forget. Yeah, forget. And then now they, they become boys again. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Were you were you ever 
what is it monolized like when you're in form form one or what is it year year 11 yeah, yeah not year <coughs> 11 year, year nine yeah um the thing and is you're uh, bullied by year 11 guys or what so now what happened is um from year one to i don't know well i'm really exposing myself on this podcast but let me say <laughs> from year one to year six yeah yeah i was really like bullied and everything because i was this the smartest kid in the class mm. who was a snitch ah uh, yeah as a teacher's pet same same you get what i'm saying yeah. like <clears throat> even when you come to my house bro there's trophies on <laughs> trophies on trophies yeah like like numeracy excellence you know in prize giving day uh, I, i think i never went home with less than six trophies a year my god yeah <laughs> like michael jackson at the grammys bro let me tell you <laughs> yo like even these days uh-huh. nowadays like i start giving like small kids that come to the house i say yeah take this look at it put it in your room yeah. and i swear to try and have one <laughs> i get one to like um my friend's sister she's yeah. i think going to year six, year yeah. seven. And she actually got a tr- I gave I think a year ago mm. and she got a trophy and she called me she like can you imagine I got a trophy <laughs> too fuck I'm so proud of her I said yo I'm actually also proud that's, of you that's you know? amazing man you actually helped people like that yeah you know but um now when I got to year 7 mm. I I started now trying to be like a cool guy you know yeah but yeah my yo Well, like your shout out dad but your screw for always shaving me bald bro <laughs> yo that nigga used to shave me bald bro no. and you know, went to a muslim school so muslims have such nice hair yeah bro, you then know. you're there kipara uh, guys are kipara <laughs> <laughs> i yeah. know that feeling uh, i used to, i used to resent it and yeah. then uh <clears throat> now when i cut the dreads mm. i was like that hell it's so easy to like maintain man yeah, it's yeah. just like even this this little growth this is like two months of growth and i'm just like this is hectic yeah i need to shave it like short short, short, short yeah. and people are like, always like why do you shave so short i'm like yeah i feel good man and yeah. it's just you walk in the shower and walk out quickly like <laughs> no, <it's> <laughs> nothing yeah but, what um, what was one of the best experiences you you had or what was one of those things you're like wow this this was magical ah uh, i mean uh, we, we, i met mean, oh, okay there were several maybe i mean, uh, I, i think meeting now the guys you you see on tv and like kofi annan uh you meet you meet so many interesting people you know mm-hmm. and you, you you're having these small small conversations where it's not on camera or whatever and it, you get some real opinions and i can't tell you all those secret <laughs> conversations <laughs> yeah, yeah. but i mean yeah. you get you get to understand how someone thinks when you are in a more personal space and yeah. you you meet so many inspirational people i remember the athletes at the time there was what was his name keep kem boy or something mm-hmm. very short guy and he used to just point like usain bolton he was one of the fun people i met and i think that was something i can i can carry in my memory for a long time yeah. didn't even know you met coffee and now wow what uh, uh, he was here for a while there are so many people i've met yeah yeah, yeah. <coughs> it's interesting that you said that having those kind of conversations off camera mm. um do you think um there's one that really inspired you or shaped you or motivated you I remember um I had a conversation with Shaq the other day on the podcast mm. and he was telling me his conversation with can't remember who but he met him at a club and mm. it was off interview off camera mm. but the conversation he had really shaped his life and really motivated him Well I mean yeah out of all the people I've met I think uh for me personally because they know me well enough for my grandparents mm-hmm. all of them Uh, I've only got one left surviving. Mm-hmm. And uh yeah, each of them had the best advice because they they've known me since I was little, you know. Yeah. And they they felt this is the direction you should go and each of them had pep talks. Like I remember one of my show shows she used to tell me always roll up your sleeves, do this <laughs> and just count to three and get on with it. <laughs> don't complain yeah. don't explain just do your shit yeah well she didn't say that but yeah. she you know yeah, she meant it, it. <laughs> yeah so yeah i mean <clears throat> yeah. i think the, they're the best motivators in my life compared to people who don't know me but 
they had some good advice but i think my grandparents were the best and i think anyone's grandparents can help like that i s- i see you guys you really had a lot of after even he was um, president and then mm. you, you guys had a lot of breakfasts with um your grandfather is there a, any time or is there a conversation that you had with him that really inspired you or shaped you or motivated you oh there's many uh, there are many but you know those are there's something he has to have told you that you say wow <laughs> this one this one is the one you know to him he was all about service service selfless oh. service yeah the guy was in uh, he was in government for more than 50 years wow. believe it or not um and i think in the first government he was one of the guys who implemented a lot of policies that shaped kenya yeah uh, as vice president he was also quite forward thinking the minister of finance as well very forward thinking but mp of of don home at first and then mp of uh, odaya he was he was dedicated to serving the people and i think to him he just said uh, to him he was always pushing the selfless agenda mm-hmm. and uh yeah if you look at his track record i mean it speaks uh, for itself yeah it speaks for itself but he was uh, he gave 50 years of his life to kenya wow and uh, i think the family appreciates that you know he retired and we got our time with him but yeah well wow. good guy mm. you shared that you had dreads why mm. did you cut your dreads first of all how long had you grown your dreads for yeah almost 10 years wow yeah 10 10 years but i kept shortening them and then you know i shaved the sides whatever mm-hmm. i think i i thought i'd i'd be loyal to them and keep them on my the rest of my life mm-hmm. but then you know now this this whole thing about it calling you ras and uh you know there's that there couple of times cops tried to arrest me because i looked suspicious or whatever yeah and you know we we had some rough <coughs> rounds with them but uh i just got tired of the whole negative association with them yeah but i love them to bits i think that's something i've always wanted i like dreadlocks mm-hmm. even up to now i see guys with dreadlocks i'm like i'm just jealous <laughs> how does this guy keep these things so fresh and yeah. yeah i struggled with mine for years and years mm. yeah uh, you said um you've talked about the association <laughs> uh yeah um how did your uh, what did your grandparents ever like your, the former guy what did he ever tell you about your dreads oh he liked them he liked them well he always liked them uh, anyone oh, in my fam everyone liked them at yeah. when they first you know when the <laughs> first little sproutlings yeah guys were like yeah, you'll grow out of it you would like it yeah. and then, then they grew longer and they looked much nicer and healthier yeah they were like yeah now we like them <laughs> <laughs> but you know when you get those small sproutlings the thing is like this finger long it yeah. never even used to reach my nose this one yeah Ah, when I looked horrible then I don't think I was seen in public with my short dreads. <laughs> but yeah. Uh yeah, it took a while. But uh, everyone liked them. I and I'm, I'm quite headstrong when I want something I get it. Yeah. Yeah. On out of my own means. Mm. Like now that you cut your dreads, do mm. you think that opened more doors for you? Or what's one thing that you think you'd have not been able to go through because you had dreads because i know there's still mm. this perception of you have to have short hair in fact the other day um at the golf club i found my auntie having a conversation with one of these young golfers who mm. was looking for a job mm-hmm. and my auntie said look me can get for you the job but i'm not giving you a job with this hair the hair it's the association with the hair guys think negative things with the hair but you're not your hair you're you're an individual you you know mm. you 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 have your own ideas and whatever and you live your own way i don't think anyone should be defined by their hair that's just judging a book by its cover you don't know the whole story mm-hmm. um for me also i think you know now i'm getting i don't say i'm getting old but i'm now reaching third floor this year yeah So 
I've been going through some level of maturity mm. and just refinement in life like I'm just now thinking about about life in a more calm way. I'm not too panicked like how I was in my 20s. Mm-hmm. Oh, you have to you have to have this by now. You have to have been married. You need this. Need this. I'm not in, I'm not in a rush anymore with life. I'm just trying to make my own money, trying to re- retire. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, struggling like everyone else but <clears throat> I think yeah losing the dreads was part of that maturity journey for me. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um what did I want to I wanted to ask you even before now we get to your brand Sean Andrew mm. and how you've been able to build that and what you've been able to achieve. Mm. You said you don't want to have kids but do you think you want to get married? <sighs> I'll tell you this dating in Kenya is a pain in the ass. <laughs> 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 to be honest, yeah. Uh, it's been a hectic experience and uh I'm not in a rush to get married. Mm-hmm. Uh, I tried I had a couple of serious relationships and they still didn't work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not it's not them it's me that type of thing, you know. <laughs> But uh yeah, I mean I would I wouldn't mm-hmm. mind settling down with someone mm-hmm. but I don't know about having kids that is still a big no for me. Yeah. But it, it's nice to, you know, I I I've been looking at it in a way that you share now you you build a legacy you share with someone. Yeah. And you know that that can live on beyond you your children whatever you can. And I think uh that is how I'd, I'd look at it if mm. I was to get married I'd, I'd want to build with someone a legacy that yeah. that lives on not children just something else that stays on uh, yeah. so when you were 8 did you see yourself getting married because you said you saw yourself no kids yeah. but did you see yourself getting married uh, i mean i'm on nairobi has shaped you no it's just nairobi that <laughs> shaped me man i mean yeah at eight years old you don't really think about mm-hmm. marriage that seriously but yeah. i mean I'd I'd look at people's parents and see the what they shared. Mm-hmm. I'd be like, yeah, I want a best friend like that. Yeah, you know, that's that's one thing that I I thought about. <clears throat> In fact, the, um, early this year, mm. um, I lost one of my uncles, and I think he'd been married for like over forty something years, mm-hmm. almost fifty years. Yeah and the thing about him and his wife they were like best friends the best friends you know like like you could genuinely tell that yeah. these guys are not just married they're, not they're just, actually yeah, friends yeah they're friends yeah they're not the guys that that start so you know how they they kasiri kat each other and they're like but see i told you you know you never listen to me yeah. there those guys were like yo we go we go travel here let's go on these dates blah 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 yeah and, and again experiences they did so many yeah. things together yeah i get and you. they were so open to doing things that the other people that the other person liked yeah so okay come let's try golf okay let's try swimming let's mm. try yeah and me i i, I Even me I, <clears throat> I had I had this conversation with Alex actually even yesterday. Mm. And I was like, bro, may I think I can find something like that. He's like, eh, in, in Nairobi. Good luck. Bro. Good luck. <laughs> that bro. sounds like Alex, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that sounds like Alex, yeah. <laughs> yeah like but, in, in Nairobi, good luck. Yeah, but I mean, do you do you see yourself getting married anytime yeah. soon? Not no, bro, you're like, also you're <clears throat> also getting old yeah, like me. Yeah, eh? <laughs> we're yeah, getting younger. Yeah, we're getting older. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> in fact, um the small girl that I was telling you about, mm. I was um I went to see them on Friday and she was like, "So have you now found someone? You know your <laughs> get, your birthday is in a few weeks. You're getting old to fuck." Yeah. I'm like, oh, "My god, man, I just came to have a good time. Why are you putting me on <laughs> the spot? These questions here yeah, now. Why are you putting me on the spot? But yeah, bro, I I definitely think I want to get married. Like mm. <clears throat> personally for me, mm. I've always been a relationship type of guy. Mm-hmm. I like being in love. No mm-hmm. cap. Bro. I mm-hmm. think love is such a beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah um, and also me I've had a couple serious relationships but I don't think I was mature enough to have those relationships at that oh, time. Oh yeah. Yeah, some of the girls I look at back and I'm like, wow, you know, she should amazing. have made a perfect yeah. wife to yeah. just a clown. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. 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 Even I go through those. You go through those, those yeah. self talks. Yeah. Like, she was the one, man. What did you do? do Why? <laughs> Why did you just waste it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and But I get you. Yeah. yeah like <clears throat> I'm also in the I'm I'm also in the space right now for. Like what you said is like I think I'm also in that like we're great, we're getting old. Mm. I'm in that maturity stage for um I'm letting the universe give me what it wants to give me. Yeah. I've said yes, I want this, I want this, I want this. I'm working towards them, but I'm not chasing them. I'm trying to attract them instead. Because mm-hmm. I think the, also the more you chase something, the more it evades you. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then when you when you finally give up on that chase, the thing is just there. Yeah, it just comes. <laughs> it just comes, and you're like, "What? what? Where the hell have you been?" <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I get you. It's true. Um, so to your brand, how have you been able to build this brand, Sean Andrew? Um, well, or I, you can say where it started. When did it start? It started. Oh yeah. I think 2014 13 there I I started off as a commercial model you know guys started off as that and then um we went into runway and whatever but then I've never been able to maintain my body in one way or another so that that dream shattered <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay I love myself for Well, yeah, I'm trying to love myself for who I am. Mm. Um, so yeah, we tried out modeling and whatever. Mm. Then we we just grew into content creation because at the time uh, social media was just taking off and yeah. in Kenya not many people understood it. Mm-hmm. And now you're seeing big companies, they all have their own social media departments and okay. whatever. And they still don't pay us right by the way. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how he can shake their heads into. into hopefully they can listen to this. Yeah, hopefully they're yeah. listening and they start paying us the right amount we are owed. Mm-hmm. Uh yeah, but I started that and I thought, you know, I'm a photography guy. Uh I built my brand on lifestyle, travel, all that stuff. Yeah. And it was a lot of consistency. These days I'm not so consistent because uh I'm going through some changes mm-hmm. personally. Yeah. Uh, but I'm I'm doing my best to be consistent these days. But before I was very consistent. Yeah. And I think uh this whole video thing is now where I'm, I'm finding quite challenging because you know all the platforms now on video. Mhm. And me, I've been a photography guy forever. Yeah. And now you have to talk on camera. camera yeah. You have to talk to your audience, which I appreciate. I mean, I would love to. Um, I'd love to be in touch with it, everyone, and you know, mm-hmm. it's it's quite challenging. Eh? Yeah. Meeting everyone is different, and everyone takes you differently, also. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's been a journey. Um. You've talked um away a, a bit away from your brand because you you mentioned something very important. Mm. You've talked about loving yourself. Mm. Your self love. So how does that look for you and is that something you've struggled with before? Oh yeah. I yeah. still struggle with it today. Mm-hmm. I mean <laughs> How do I put this? Now I'm exposing myself. Mm-hmm. But uh Of course I've I've spoken about how I've always had challenges with mental health mm-hmm. and one of the key things was why I'm not very serious in relationships is because I've never really loved myself wow. or come to the understanding of loving myself you know I've always been that that selfless friend so the love to others comes first mm-hmm. And I always try to be the best, the best friend possible. And that selflessness has left me in limbo of understanding myself and how I can love myself. Uh, yeah, so it's been a challenge, lifelong challenge. I'm pretty sure everyone has faced it once, once or twice, you know. Um, yeah, but I'm working on it. Wow. <laughs> we still have to work on it. Mm. Yeah. But you're, you you you're in a much better place. Oh yeah. 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 I think so. <coughs> I, I'm more stable these days mentally, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
I like what you've said like cuz even me personally mm. I've really struggled to love myself but I'm getting to a place of you know loving yourself and I like what mm. you've said is and I also think maybe that was one of the things um about my relationships is when you struggle to love yourself it's very hard for you to genuinely love someone someone exactly yes. and in a lot of my relationships my insecurities really played out mm. you get because there's this struggle of loving yourself yeah yeah and you, you know you're never really secure in your own skin or whatever it, it brings a lot of challenges but i think uh, men 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 don't really i don't know why men find it hard to talk yeah yeah and, and uh, myself included it's it's not easy to not easy to, to, to share what's what you're struggling with internally and you always feel like you have to fight your own battles yourself and sometimes you it's quite lonely but i think it's always good to have someone to talk to about these issues it's good to talk yeah i think you feel a lot better you said you also felt with your ted talk you said you felt enlightened yeah and better yeah and lighter yeah and i think that's that's men should also talk about what they're going through it's it's there's nothing wrong with being not okay yeah. it's okay not to be okay yeah yeah um what do i see um my <clears throat> okay my ted talk was okay you you listen to let me not mm. um spoil it for people but i'm really passionate about uh mental health mm. because i lost one of my closest friends to to suicide you know mm. so it's it's <coughs> it, it really affected me in some type of way in fact like mm. all my tattoos are just writings about positivity yeah in fact the other day my mom <coughs> my mom came into my room and she's like you and this book you've written on your hand what's <laughs> on your body what's wrong with you <laughs> i said your mom you just chill out <laughs> <laughs> have you read it <laughs> <laughs> have you read it? yeah yeah um yeah but Um, I like what you said about especially men and mental health and I'm really mm. actually because I look at it like the suicide rates in Kenya 8 out of 10 yeah, suicides bad. committed are by men it's bad and I think I've I've been there also where I I really considered ending things yeah you you go into a really dark place yes. and uh what saved me was the fact uh, you asked if I have siblings to me even my cousins are my siblings yeah and my own siblings and i always thought what am i leaving behind mm-hmm. you know if i if i go yeah how will that affect them yeah. how will it affect my mom yeah how will it affect my dad mm-hmm. you know and i just i thought about it and i just said just keep fighting mm-hmm. and you know speak about it yeah and I, it's not easy for anyone else i'd say that mm-hmm. but i think if you're in such a place just think about what you're leaving behind yeah and can you fight it yeah you can if you can't fight it alone find someone to help you to help you it's yeah, no one is ever alone in this world and no one should be alone in this world mm. and uh, i think that's one of the reasons why i i, I just kept fighting very hard <clears throat> i like what you've said and because you've been honest I, i'll also be mm. honest in mind like i've 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 contemplated a couple times mm. Um I think let me not ex- I think let people listen to the TED talk so mm. yeah but I've contemplated a couple of times um I know those days I'd drive and I'm like yo you think if if I just crash no one would just, no one yeah. would think that the guy committed suicide yeah. you know because you know you also don't want to affect your yeah, parents you know yeah yeah it's just uh, you'd, you'd play it off as it was an accident yeah they're like ah oh, yeah you know you know uh, yeah so I've had those couple of thoughts you know but yeah. Um, what got you into that kind of dark space if you don't mind me asking <sighs> well i mean it's just uh, no one is ever always happy you know yeah there are experiences in life where you, you really feel like you can't keep going on uh for me i i won't go into it for me it was uh my own family whatever we struggled with mm-hmm. um high school bullying 
and just in general i i was in a i was not in a good place i was not a happy teenager yeah put it that i was a happy child and uh, i'm always reminded at home how i was so happy and then i just stopped talking <laughs> and, yeah and I, i told them yeah life happened <laughs> but i mean yeah to me it was just my teenagers were uh, adolescence was not kind it was rough right? <laughs> it was rough yeah and um i know many people think it's out of uh, these are privileged problems but no even uh, even as we had uh, i had a lot of tough tough experiences mm-hmm. uh, i'm not ready to share them no no no, no. but yeah. <laughs> when i am I'll, uh, i will yeah you know no yeah, problem yeah, yeah. you always are uh, the day you're ready and if you mm. ever want a platform to speak this platform is open yeah, for you yeah. um yeah <clears throat> for me when i look at it i think um even me I, i actually went through a lot of tough times mm. and the fact that i was trying to mask my pain with alcohol and drugs didn't even make it better oh no nothing nothing solves it you know yeah i've not i've not been reliant on drugs but alcohol was a slippery slope mm-hmm. uh and only till recently when i started working with uh, alcohol brands is when i i took this responsible drinking thing pretty seriously mm-hmm. uh i was i was never a good slope with alcohol for me mm-hmm. nowadays i don't even drink much wow yeah you <coughs> um to to someone out here listening to this podcast thinking about this you know podcast mm-hmm. i want to ask you um how do you what advice would you give them to get out of that slippery slope to get out or what advice can you give them towards having a more happier life mm. you, okay you can't be happy all the time but mm. for, okay maybe maybe let me rephrase my question and ask What do you do nowadays to stay mentally fit? Ah, you know Nairobi has let's start off with Nairobi and how it has a lot of drama. Yeah. And you know every even the people you think are your closest friends they just bring a lot of unnecessary bullshit. Yeah. And I I think um one bit of advice is the smaller the circle the truer the bond. Wow. So have some real friends around you but not too many mm-hmm. you can have buddies and acquaintances that's yeah, fine that's right. but friends you can count on one hand or less yeah. that's good um for a slippery slope and all that i can't just tell you be happy mm-hmm. but choose to be happy look at yourself uh, evaluate like where you are yeah you're drinking you you're waking up with a hangy or just your body is rejecting everything uh, do you want to live like that for the rest of your life no. think about it that way you just question yourself like is this the best i can do is this the best me yeah i think when you when you internalize those questions yeah you you find a self a bit of self worth and Yeah, it's that's how I do it anyway. <laughs> <coughs> do you um do you meditate or journal? I used to journal. Yeah. Uh yeah, and then I don't know, I just stopped. Just I stopped a lot of those things. spiritual things, but uh <laughs> I th- I do sit and meditate. Yeah. Uh, I think that because you have to have these conversations with yourself. You have to check yourself, man. <laughs> Otherwise you going you going run into some bullshit <laughs> that's true <laughs> yeah so that that's that's my my way of doing it's just always check yourself and avoid drama and i think um like once you journal or write about it it's like talking yeah. so you've already gone one step closer yeah. to solving the problem and yeah. you then you look back and you're like ah that's even a small thing yeah especially when you write it down you see it yeah And you know it's in your mind it's always just dancing around with other thoughts so you can never grasp it and work on it yeah. unless you write it down and you see it and fix it in fact one of my friends shared with me what they do is they write and then they burn the paper yeah 
and mm. they feel much better yeah, cuz you feel like you've let go of you've it let go of it yeah yeah wow um you along your journey have you ever felt like quitting social media this thing. yeah it's such a public life to live you know it is yeah and uh I mean it it is yeah but I I don't think about quitting I just always think about readjusting and yeah. you know uh I think that's when you adapt to new changes and you you put yourself in different situations it evolves into something better because if you just quit you always be you'd always ask yourself what could have been if I did this what 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 could I have done Yeah. How much further could I have taken it, you know? So I don't think quitting is a thing. It's just adapting and changing over time. What was this quote I used to like uh, by Churchill? Is you... So you know because the social media is such public. I remember even there was a time <laughs> your cousin was put on I think Mbasho ground for buying one of his his girlfriends a gift. Uh, or something. Yeah. So how's your relationship with the media? Uh, yeah, I can't speak for him. Yeah. But uh <laughs> on, on But you've had quite your stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah on yeah. on my side. Yeah. 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 Anything yeah. I say, in fact there was a girl who was mistaken for my sister because I just you know you call someone bro sis. Yeah. So they, and they keep pursuing that she's my she's not my sister, okay? She's <laughs> my friend and her dad was quite pissed off with me about it. He used to tell me, "Why did you do that?" You no, know, you know she's in this. And anyway, that's that's a different story, but the, yeah. I mean they it's like they have to sell stories. That's true. And they can write whatever, they can twist your words. Mm-hmm. What I learned is uh whenever they try and pick on me, I don't respond. <laughs> because then the story dies there. Yeah. Because it's nonsense really. They're all gossipers and whatever, but I, it's our media. They are given freedom of speech, but they don't know how to <laughs> speak freely and responsibly honestly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> well, but, uh, have you ever struggled with imposter syndrome? No. I think the the good thing is that I check myself. Yeah. Because then that that I've met a lot of people with that thing and they think that the world eh? mm-hmm. and they walk o- all over people and they they just think they're better and uh to me I was always brought up in the sense that you do unto others what you want them to do unto you you treat others how you wish to be treated yeah so if i treat someone badly of course i'll expect to be treated badly yeah and i'm a selfless guy in, in by nature so I always try to be my best. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I I don't I am also a simple guy. I don't I don't come with so many entitlements and whatever <laughs> nonsense. I think one of the things that I've seen that has really come a lot in the conversations that I've had since I relaunched or since I started this new season of the podcast is mm. that self talk, talking to yourself. Mm. Do you have anything to say about that? talking to myself. Yeah. I think a lot of I think actually probably six guests they've yeah. had that thing for. I really talk to myself a lot. Yeah. It keeps me in line. It does. It does because you, you you talk to yourself frankly. Mm-hmm. I think even if some of your best friends are there they'll, they'll still try and bullshit the w- their way through and lighten the situation. They won't be too honest with you like no, I don't agree with you doing this. Yeah. Me. Their friends were like that they 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 are afraid to tell you the truth and i think you tell yourself the truth yeah and sometimes yeah you don't look outside the box so you're you're in your own circus but uh at least you're honest with yourself and if you have a good friend that now gives you the outside the box perspective yeah you now talk to yourself about it and be like i think i'll be better off doing this or I should just stay stay in my course. Yeah. And if everyone's against me, I know what I'm doing. Mm. There, there there are times that that is so necessary. I think it's so necessary, especially when you feel like you're overindulging in things 
and your your body is re- you're not listening to your body or you're not you're not seeing how it's fracturing relationships around you mm-hmm. it's good to be honest with yourself and just check yourself i think yeah i think i also talk to myself a lot even not even just in my mind but sometimes verbally i'm yeah? verbally there and yeah. so like, are you talking to me i'm like oh no <laughs> man and they're just like yo <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know why I call my third po- oh, okay it's, it's a nickname I was given when I went to coast so mm. um a lot of people call me Paco mm. so normally I'm like yo Paco you messed up oh <laughs> my god Paco what have you done and then someone is like yeah especially when I'm in the car with my driver like are you talking to me I'm like oh shit no 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 <laughs> it was a loud thought yeah even me I think I I talk a lot yes. to myself yeah. in, uh, verbally yeah. especially when I'm shopping or whatever I'm just like <laughs> Yeah but I think uh, this this shampoo will dry out my hair and, <laughs> and you know people think they, I've I've seen people looking at me as if I have earphones or whatever but I'm actually just <laughs> talking to myself yeah. and guys I said it's I think it's healthy some people are superstitious and they think it's witchcraft or whatever <laughs> but no it's I think it's healthy yeah. um to someone watching this podcast or listening to this podcast mm. that's looking to build a brand a personal brand mm. what advice would you give them that's a very good question um well from my own experience mm-hmm. uh, a personal brand is yourself mm-hmm. and how you carry yourself mm-hmm. uh always have a good clean image uh of course all of us a lot of people have skeletons under the carpet mm-hmm. in the closet where uh, in the attic but always be good natured to others treat people equally it's your it's it's how you market yourself it's it's um it's you you you, you portray yourself however you want you want to be honest you can be honest I just be clean man I don't <laughs> there's so many people who are not themselves yeah and they they this whole thing about having two person I, I I'm the kind of guy who's what you see is what you get mm-hmm. uh but I've seen so many people in this industry who have two faces three faces and it's just it's appalling like I can't I can't be their friend because I don't know who they are yeah this guy is uh, individual to the public and then in private is another nasty talker mistreats women shouts at them blah 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 i can't point out anyone without proper evidence yeah but i know there are people there like that i've seen it in my own eyes mm-hmm. and i think that type of person not a genuine person and i don't think you should be in the public eye if you can't be relatable if you can't be honest with people you can't treat them right in in private and in public i don't think uh that's a good way to go i think having a personal brand that's clean and honest is the best way to go especially in today is things like today man we're all on hype and all that nonsense yeah i think humans are losing it <laughs> you feel like we're not our honest selves yeah How do men build brands though? I feel like for a lady to build a personal brand is a bit easier because when I look at it I think sex sells. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you on that. Um that's how the world is today. Sure. Where we're all visual and we're just manipulated by what the sexual innuendo is out there. Uh but <sighs> I think men if if men were a bit more honest with each other if we spoke about whatever we're going through and we work together mm-hmm. if we're open to working together and all that I think you can build a good brand if you're a, an honest speaking man they, they, you know men just internalize a lot and they think this it's a macho thing it's a strong thing well, of course we're egotistical some of us True. but uh, if we're honest with each other and just work together i think that's how men can build brands yeah. i think as, <clears throat> i think as men were generally very competitive yeah no oh, yeah and we com- a lot of times you find you compare yourself to others yeah 
and I think we need to reach a point for where we're more supportive mm. than in competition. Because yeah. like I said, <laughs> the other day I was having a conversation with my friend and we were like we were laughing at the fact that every even actually even with Noah I was having a conversation with him and we mm. were laughing at the fact that when a girl goes through a hard time, she's calling her boys, they'll cry, they'll make fun of Sean Andrew mm. for breaking her heart. Mm-hmm. But when Sean is going through a hard time, I'm telling him, yo, bro, don't be a pussy. Just mm. come and drink some tequila. You feel better. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I get you. Yeah. We, we, we hide behind a lot of things. We don't, we don't talk honestly and support each other. And I think that's one of the big problems we have as men, especially in this country, man. And the way you said the, the suicide thing, there's, there's someone who, who died recently and everyone thought he was happy. Yeah. And you, when he, he he did kill himself, but everyone thought he was happy, but you didn't know what he had internalized because he was always meeting you up for drinks. Yeah. And you just talk about rubbish, but you you don't know what he's going through. And a lot of, uh, it's a big problem in this country, I think. And yeah, I just think if you have a good support circle, you're on the right track. In fact, um, I started this thing on, my Instagram mm. where on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I'm trying to be consistent. Some days I miss, yeah. Mm. But like Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, what I try to do is I, I try to put like some thought-provoking questions out there to, you know, to help people. And yeah, then, yeah the other day, um, some, some boy texted me and was like, Tupac, I really appreciate what you're doing because I'm starting to see some growth in my life. I'm starting to ask myself these hard questions. Mm. And the fact that you're also sharing the answers that some people share, of course, it's anonymous. Um, it's also helping me, you know, t- to reflect. So yeah, I think there's a lot of support we can give each other. We can, yeah. And I think it's not, it's not just, it's not just a support, but we, we also have to check in mm. with each other. Yeah. You don't wait for the story to come to us. We always have to check in. And I think also, yeah. one thing we miss out is we don't appreciate our friends. Wow. You know, you don't you don't tell your buddy uh, when you're saying bye to them, hey man, I appreciate you for being my boy. Yeah. And I don't think many people practice that. And uh, I think that's that's one of the things that that can stop someone from killing themselves it's like look at least one person appreciates me for for my time and you know so i think we should check in on each other and appreciate each other also yeah <coughs> but i like what you said because for real as men even i was having a conversation with my dad and you were like as men no one ever compliments you mm. you know no one ever you know tells you that you know you look nice or anything because mm. <coughs> we're exposing ourselves on this one let me tell you <laughs> yo so now uh, does this day yeah. bro, i was going for a date bro. i even went to buy a new outfit mm. yeah i was going for a date bro like this uh, they were guys hey boss no no graffiti you know you're smelling good like hey, what's the occasion i'm like yo i'm just going on a date bro whole night um watched a movie with a girl um and then had dinner and then went out to the club, bro. The whole night, bro, she never even told me I was looking fresh, bro. <laughs> but told me I smelled good. Bro, I felt so bad, bro. Like, even in the club, like, other like other people are like, hey, bro, your outfit today is easy, bro. Oh, but man. you know she never t- <laughs> And it hurts, bro. But like, what? Yeah. No, I, th- I think I'm, 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 I'm that bad on my end. Yeah. Like, I will not notice a new haircut For real, on yeah? the girl. No. no. <laughs> and, and, like... I'm wondering why is she sighing the whole day? She just been <sighs> <laughs> you're like, what's wrong? <laughs> yeah, and, and then at night you'd be like, you did notice? <laughs> notice what? I got a new haircut, and the thing is like two inches different. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> you're like, I got a new haircut, and I'm just like, oh, you you look nice. You look the <laughs> same. I mean, you look good. <laughs> Yeah. But I, I'm that, I'm that guy. I'm the worst guy at, at, at rem- uh, noticing those little things. But I get you. Yeah, no, no one, no one compliments men at all. Yeah, that's true. Do Do you think you appreciate your friends? Oh, I do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They've They've been through a lot. 
yeah. being my friend, they've been through a lot. Mm-hmm. But uh, I appreciate that they're still there and they they've kept my secrets and I've kept theirs. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I think. Yeah, I have to appreciate them <coughs> yeah. for that. I they know too much. <laughs> I normally like I literally have this thing for where I actually. Sometimes I just text my friend. I'm like, bro, I really appreciate what you do for me. Mm. And bro, I just want to tell you that I love you. And the guy's like, yo, Paco, stop being gay, man. <laughs> I'm like, no, like, like, bro, like, genuinely, you actually mean a lot yeah. to me, you know. Yeah. Like, yo, bro, Connie, what's the issue? And I'm like, bro, there's nothing wrong. Yeah, I'm I just, just saying, woke up in a mood. And yeah. I'm like, you know, appreciate yeah. your friends. Yeah. yeah. And guys, if you're watching this podcast or listening to it, please stop it. Text ten of your friends and tell them yeah. how much they mean to you, or even just your parents or your relatives. You know, you never know what it could do to them. You never know it could change their day. You know. Yeah, and also even DM us, man. Even us, we need some appreciation <laughs> once in a while. We'll send it back. We'll send it back. Uh, yeah, I promise. I'll send it back. Send it back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can even reply DMs, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we try. now what what I did was. Mm-hmm. Um, and i think this thread thing is also good mm-hmm. is uh i've now said i'm only going to reply to meaningful conversations because you know people just write hey hi to uh supu and you stop there and then you're just like what do you want me to do what do you want me to say yeah. you know? so i mean if you come with a meaningful thing yeah. and i think threads is brilliant for that because now Uh, you can write something and someone will put their idea then you have a conversation mm. and i think uh that's that's the way to go for me is i uh, i might stop replying to dms but threads are just have open conversations there yeah. sure. you didn't want to tell any aj super i know <laughs> I, i i can't slide like that <laughs> <laughs> uh, have, have you have you ever slid in someone's dms ah uh, yeah all the time and does it work say so, sometimes uh, It's a 50-50. It's a 50-50. Even me, I, I send it, then I throw the phone away, then I try not to think about nah. it, and I hear, ding! I'm like, yes! Nah, and then no. you see it's Safaricom telling you it's G1. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. No, 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 100%, bro. Mm. 100%, bro. Nah, like, you gotta do what you gotta do, nah. man. Yeah. But I think these days I'm so, I'm, I'm more reserved, bro. Like, mm. no. But it's also a bad thing because if you also don't try, how are you gonna find someone? You know? Oh yeah. yeah you I'm can't saying? just sit and wait for it to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. you have to pursue. You have to try. Have to pursue. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, but I know yo, some of my guys are booming in DMs. <laughs> Don't they? I can't even, <laughs> let me not expose him, man. He'll be so like No, and I have I have three friends who've messaged the same person. Yeah. And they were all sitting together. Ah. And they message the same person trying to see who will work. And I mean, really? really? <laughs> Sauce. <laughs> yeah, but, but yeah, bro, it's, Nairobi is crazy, bro. Yeah. yeah Nairobi, that, that's a whole other conversation. But yeah. what accomplishments do you feel like you're proud of when you sit here today? Is there something that you feel that you're proud of? Uh, for me, it's uh, not being less shy than I used to be. Mm-hmm. I think that's one of the biggest i'm still very introverted um i wouldn't i wouldn't approach someone for a conversation they can start it with me yeah i'm that kind of guy <laughs> like i would i'm not the guy who makes new friends not i'm not at that level yet <laughs> i go i i wait for someone to bring me a story and talk to me and we 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 converse but i think yeah getting over my shyness in this whole uh public domain was a very big challenge and i think i'm i'm much better at it I'm a bit more confident uh yeah i think that's one of my big achievements i i i don't know about accolades and whatever they'll speak for themselves one day yeah <laughs> yeah But I understand you, but even me, I, I keep on telling people that I'm very shy. No one believes me. Mm. But I'm actually very, very shy. Mm. And sometimes I'm like out in my brain. It's like, bro, you just go and that bit. I'm like, bro, <laughs> like you don't. Uh. In But fact, think, <laughs> and then the pain is that they're always in groups, eh? Yeah. So you're trying to single out that one, but she's got like five friends. In you fact, have to in work fact, your way through <laughs> it. Leave your boy with one of them. Yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, it's hectic. In fact, the other day, um, my boy told me. I promise you, bro. If you go and talk to those girls and they come stay with us, 
take this 5k <laughs> like ah bro you don't know how shy I am bro like bro but don't is not motivating ah, the one is like, like ah, you eh <laughs> i don't know bro there's only way that there's only one way that i can approach them but that means the night will go downhill because i have to get faded oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know you're faded you're a bit confident you have some liquid courage liquid courage say, yeah, yeah. yeah what do you think is your philosophy of life or way of thinking that has gotten you to where you are today actually even before that yeah mm. yeah start, let's stop there philosophy i think i'm quite stoic yeah i'm a bit real with myself mm-hmm. and whatever situations i face um but also i think uh in a way me being self selfless mm-hmm. it's costed me because some people take advantage of that but at the same time it's rewarded me mm-hmm. and i don't i don't do selfless things just for whatever i can get back yeah i just want to treat people the way that they deserve to be treated mm-hmm. and i think those are the main things about me that have put me where i am is just being self selfish and real yeah Se- selfless and real yeah i've really been selfish and when i have been selfish it's what matters the most it's i'm doing this for my mental health mm-hmm. or you know yeah that's that's where you should be selfish to be honest yeah okay um as we come to the end of the podcast no oh, man i could talk here forever for real <laughs> <laughs> yeah but as you come to the end i wanted to ask you when mm. you hear just to kick it as a blessing what do you think about it i think that's now my uh, my outro i, I want to see what all my guests think just to kick it as a blessing means i won't say the answer or maybe one day well so i think i think um when you hear the phrase don't yeah, it, yeah. And i and i hear it i think it's just uh vibes with a good friend you know yeah. when you when you come meet up with a good friend and you have this chat you leave feeling refreshed yeah and i always value having meaningful conversations with people in the sense that it makes my brain work yeah i don't like gossiping and you know just sitting and drinking and talking about all so and so about this or so and so is doing that doesn't progress the mind and i think when when you sit with your boy and you have honest conversations with your boy or your girl you know men mm-hmm. can have girl friend girls who are friends yeah i don't <laughs> i think uh, when that vibe is right and it the convo flows mm-hmm. it's a blessing i oh. agree with you yeah um what do you what do you is there anything i might have missed to ask you is there anything you want to share before we close this Ah, uh, no nothing at all. But if if you guys think I should be doing this more often, comment. We'll see it. Yep. I'd love to be talking on on podcast. Yeah, we'd love to see a podcast special yeah. Andrew. Yeah, maybe even have my own yeah and compete with you now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, have no, you no. on my podcast. No, no, no. <laughs> definitely I yeah. I'm there to support you. Oh yeah, I appreciate um, that. I'm sure the team here is willing to support you. Mm-hmm. Um from creation from th- what I've also been through. Mm. Yeah, um but I also want to just say thank you for giving me the time. Thank you for blessing and the podcast. Yeah, man. and I I really appreciate the fact that you 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 sat sat with me and listened to everything I had to say judgment free. Judgment. Ah, uh, yeah, I think that's that's a real that's a real uh, honor. Yeah. No bad. Blessing, man. <coughs> I'm I'm also grateful that you've come and you've been honest on this conversation i Ma'am. i know i know and i'm very certain there's someone that's going to watch this and feel better especially a young boy out there going mm-hmm. through something and that's the essence of this podcast you know and if yeah. you if you want me back again no for sure we, we for sure yeah. we can do another I can one. be like no i'll just come back yeah yeah yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no no problem yeah. <clears throat> in fact we're, um, in fact there's there's something we try to work on I'll share with you mm. and you see whether it's something you're interested in oh no I'm always open yes yeah. for those of you who have joined us today thank you so much for tuning in thank you so much for joining us on another episode of just to kick it is a blessing remember no matter where you are no matter what you're going through the fact that you're alive the fact that you're watching this means that it's a blessing thank you and see you next week goodbye hello guys 
Thank you for tuning into the Just a Kick It Is a Blessing podcast. We kindly ask that you like, share, and subscribe to this podcast. The bigger the podcast grows, the better it becomes, and the bigger the guests. So the only way we can grow is if we grow together. So we kindly, kindly, kindly ask that you please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Thank you, and remember, Just a Kick It Is a Blessing.